thank you everyone for being here for the search track at ApacheCon 2021. Um, for this session, we have uh, Tomas fernandez Lobe, a senior engineer from the Apple Media Products team and a long-time committer and PMC member of the Apache Lucina and Solar projects. Uh, today, his talk would highlight the high-level APIs that Solar offers to improve retrieval times, uh, while also diving deep into the lower aspects of how Lucene implements block max WAND algorithm, something that's been in Lucene for a while, uh, but still needs to be about. Uh, so uh, over to you, Tomas. Thank you, Anshu. Yeah, well, uh, this presentation, as, I, as uh, Anshu mentioned, is a uh, faster retrieval of top end documents with Apache Solar. Uh, why the title of this talk is somewhat generic. This talk is about some of the nice features uh, added in the last couple of years to the scene and uh, a little bit more recently to Apache Solar. Um, I'm going to go to some of the details of the, how, of the algorithm, how it's used and implemented in the scene. Uh, but at the end, it's just a simple API change. Uh, one that if you are using Lucene, you are already using it because uh, it's enabled by default or you opted out. Uh, on Solar, on the other hand, this, um, this, is, not, this is an opt-in feature. Uh, so you have to send an extra parameter to you. So if you are getting just one thing out of this talk, I hope it is uh, there is one parameter that you can use that can give you some nice performance improvements. So uh, this is going to be my inverted index throughout this talk, right? Um, I think most people, especially in this track, will already know about this, but uh, the idea is that uh, terms are pointing to documents that contain such terms. And the idea of inverted index is that it makes it easy to and efficient to resolve queries, in particular text queries. So let's jump to one example of, of how uh, the inverted index could be used. So um, let's say we have this query where we are querying for the and brown and fox. So essentially we want documents that match the three of those terms. This is essentially a, a best case scenario. Um, Lucene will treat each of those uh, posting lists. It will go through them with an iterator and it will leapfrog over the three posting lists uh, to try to produce uh, the final result as, as efficient as possible. It will use two main methods. One is going to be next doc, which positions the cursor of the iterator in the next available document for a posting list. And the other method is going to be advanced, which takes a target as an argument, and that will position the cursor of the iterator in the document with ID of the target. And if that is not available to the next available one. So going back to this example, the way Lucene is going to work is that it will sort first the posting lists by uh, by cost. It will start with a with the least costy one, and which will lead the iteration. And it will call next doc to position the, the in the next document. And uh, then uh, once once it has a document, it will go to the next posting list and say advance to the document I know I have. Right. Uh, in this particular case, Fox had document with ID zero but Brown doesn't have it. It has document with AT1. And because this is, this is an AND query, we know that zero is not a match. So we can go back to Fox and now we, we can advance it to document one, right? But again, Fox doesn't have a document one in its posting list. So it advances to the next available one, which is document seven. Again, we call advanced seven on the term Brown. Again, the document is not there, so the, the cursor is going to be positioned in document eight. Again, we can go back to Fox and say seven is not there. Let's advance to eight, but eight is not there in Fox, so I'm going to advance to nine. Uh, and then once I do that, Brown advance nine actually goes to the document with ID nine, and then the I do advance nine, and it will go to the document with ID nine. And uh, now I can score nine, and that's it. Go to the next uh, document. And in this case, no more documents. As you can see, this is this can be very efficient. We only had to score a single document, and we were able to jump over a lot of documents, especially for the term da. Um, jumping is very good, not, not only because we don't have to score the document, but also because in the posting list, uh, those, uh, those postings, those documents are compressed. And actually going and, and visiting or evaluating one of the documents 
may mean that I need to go get a file from disk, and then I have to decompress the full block, and then I can access um, that document. So let's do the same query, but now instead of and, it's an or query. So I want documents that match the or brown or fox. Um, in this case, it would also start with fox, and it will say, okay, next document on fox, and uh, next document on brown, next, bro next document on the. So what happens now is that, okay, zero is not a match in brown and the, but it is a match in fox. So I, I need to score it because it's it's a it's a good it's a document that I'm interested about, right? Uh, so I score zero, and then I go to the next document on Fox, uh, is, which is going to be document with eighty seven, um, but document one is already there in the and brown, so I need to score one and advance and advance those posting lists and go to the next one, which is going to be document two, which only matches the term da, so it's likely not very important, but I need to score it and visit it. Uh, and I keep going the same way until until the end of the uh, of the iteration. As you can see, I had to go through uh, lots of documents. Uh, in this particular example, I actually had to go through every document in the in the index. And um, let's say I it is a very common use case in search engines that I don't really need to see all the documents and the score for all the documents. I may only care about the top n. And just imagine, maybe in this case, I wanted to see the top three documents, and I had to score 10 documents and visit them all. It may have been a very slow query. It's a very expensive query. And really, I just discarded everything after three. So that's what one tries to address. The idea of, uh, one builds on this idea that we don't need to score every document. It just needs the top 10. So you can do whatever you want with the rest, but just give me the top 10, uh, the top N, sorry. Um, and it will attempt to terminate early and skip over non-competitive documents um, while still being safe called, or sometimes called correct, which means that the actual top N documents that you're getting back from the algorithm are the same that you would get if you run the, the, the regular exhaustive alternative where you visit every document. Uh, it also builds on the idea that different Boolean clauses of the query are, cannot contribute negatively to the, to the score of a document. So a term matching a document cannot give you, uh, cannot de decrease the score of such document. Um, the idea is to make the OR query look a little bit more like an AND, and that's where the name comes from. So what if we knew the maximum impact that a, that a term can have on the document score? So let's run with that idea. Let's, send, let's say that we could know how much, what is the maximum that a term could contribute to the score of a document. And going back to the previous example, let's say that the term da could have a maximum impact of 0 0.3 points, brown could have a maximum impact of two, and fox could have a maximum impact of eight. Uh, just by looking at least, let's say you want the top three documents, you can tell that Fox is, is very important. Uh, brown, is, brown is somewhat important, and that is really not that important, right? Something uh, all of us intuitively suspected. So this is more or less what the algorithm suggests. Uh, the first thing that uh, we need to do is to sort the posting lists based on the current position of the document ID. So the current position of the iterator for, for the posting lists then go uh, through through those posting lists from top to bottom, and then start adding the maximum impact of, of the term until, until the sum is greater than a threshold. So what is that threshold? That threshold is the, the score value at which you know that if a document score less than that value, you don't care about that document. And if the document uh, could score more than that value, then you, you want to evaluate because you could, you could that could be a, a match, right? Um, so let's say you, you are looking for the top three documents and uh, let's say you already scored three documents and the lowest one of those has a score of 10. Essentially, you, you don't care about any document that, could, that couldn't give you more than 10, right? So essentially 10 in that case is your, um, is your threshold. So once, once the posting list crosses, uh, that threshold, 
essentially you found what it's what it's called the pivot term it's the term um is the, the posting list that crosses that threshold sorry is called the pivot term and the document id where the pivot term is pointing at is called the pivot and why is the pivot important the pivot means that no document since the current state of the iteration and the pivot is going to be interesting so you can you can discard any document you don't have to evaluate any document between the current state of the iteration and the pivot essentially you can advance every posting list until the pivot um so once uh once you found that and you uh, you, you see if the posting if all the posting lists above the pivot term have are already pointing at the pivot then that's a document that you that, that you want to evaluate and, and get the score of and um if not you just go and do the algorithm again and then continue running this algorithm until you find uh the end of the document so let's take uh the same example that we had before and do uh one attempt so um i already scored three i advanced it a little bit and i scored three documents document zero which gives us a score of eight document one which gives us a score of 2.3 and document two which gives us a score of 0 0.3 as you can see in this case um the score of those documents is the maximum they could have given us but again what we see there is the is the overall maximum it doesn't need to score uh that for uh, like it, the term doesn't need to score that that value it's going to be at at the most that value but for the purpose of this example to make it easier um i, I made it that way um okay so the first thing the algorithm said is that we need to sort the posting list uh by the the current position they are pointing at and in this in this case they are already sorted right because the term da is pointing at document three brown is pointing at document five and fox is pointing at document seven so we don't need to change anything there good so now we need to go find the pivot term uh the threshold in this case uh I, I forgot to mention in this example we want the top three so essentially we want uh we only care about the document that can give us a score of more than 0 0.3 okay uh so let's start with the um, trying to find the pivot term as you know like 0 0.3 is not greater than the threshold it's equal but it needs to be greater uh, so we go to, to the next posting list 2.3 is bigger than the threshold so that would be our pivot term and the position where that pivot term is pointing at is the pivot so document five and as i mentioned before since we found the pivot now we know that absolutely no document since the from the current state of the iteration and until the pivot is an interesting uh, is an interesting uh, document so we can skip it and that's essentially what we do we call advanced five on the terms that now the algorithm said like if everything above the pivot term and the pivot term is pointing at the pivot then we evaluate the, the document otherwise we go to step one again so since the is not pointing at five we need to run the algorithm again and okay so the first step is sort the posting list and now since uh, the term brown is pointing at document five it will go to the top and then dies is second and then uh, fox um and now what happens that uh two which is the maximum impact of the term brown is already greater than the threshold so the pivot term is still brown and the pivot is still five and now what happens is that, up, that there's no posting list above the pivot term so that means that everything above the pivot term is pointing at the pivot so we have to score uh document five let's say we do that and in this case it gives us a score of 1.7 uh which makes it to the top three and then we call next doc we run the algorithm again uh in this case uh we don't need to sort every anything because already brown and the are uh the the posting lists are sorted and now yeah the pivot now is the position of brown because um the threshold right now is 1.7 and 2 which is the maximum impact of the term brown is already greater than the threshold so uh, the pivot is now document six um everything above the pivot term is because there's nothing about above the pivot term uh is pointing to uh to the same document so now we need to evaluate it 
and then we score uh, six. And let's say it gives us a score of 1.9 because it matches Brown and that. And good, it makes it to the top three and we call next document. And then we run the algorithm again. So now what happened is that Fox, which, um, um, which has a maximum impact of eight, actually makes it to the top because it's positioned at document seven, while Brown and the are positioned at document eight. Um, so since it has a maximum impact of eight, it's greater than the threshold. The threshold right now is 1.9. Uh, so we found the pivot term and seven is the pivot. And we need to score it because there's no uh, documents with a uh, document. There's no posting lists with document IDs below the pivot. Um, and then, yeah, we score document seven, let's say it gives us a score of five, which makes it to the top N. And uh, we run the algorithm again. Okay, so now an interesting one. So what happened is that um, we sort again the posting list by the position where uh, of their cursor. Uh, Brown and there go to the top because they're pointing to document eight, and Fox goes to the bottom because it's pointing to document nine. However, the threshold right now is two point three, so um, Brown with a maximum impact of two does not cross the threshold. The with two point three does not cross the threshold. So the threshold is only crossed once we get to Fox, right? And uh, that means the pivot term is still Fox and the pivot is document nine. So now we can advance uh, all the other posting lists to document nine and score nine. And let's say it gave us a score of 9.2 and we call next doc. And now since we reached the, like, if we run the algorithm again, we would also, the, the pivot term would still be Fox, but now next doc, the, the position where the Fox is located is and no more documents, which means we are done with the, with the iteration, right? Um, as you can see, I was able to skip over a lot of documents. I didn't have to score them all. And at the same time, the top three are guaranteed to be correct. Uh, also, if there were more documents at this point, we would we would not care about any document that doesn't match the the term Fox, right? Because right now the threshold would be five, uh, which would make uh, keep continuing this iteration going uh, really fast. As I said, um, we need the maximum impact that a term could have on uh, on a document, the maximum contribution that a term could have on a document in order to run this algorithm. Um, and we could find the maximum impact uh, that a term could have on a document if we require that the score contributions uh, depends only and solely on index statistics such as the term frequency or the document frequency, right? Um, so, uh, and, and this is actually a common case uh, in search engines. So what are the drawbacks? The first one is that the heat count will be incomplete. So as, as you saw, we are skipping over lots of documents we don't even, that we don't even evaluate. So since we are potentially skipping over documents, we aren't counting, counting all the matches anymore. So the actual number that we see is a lower bound of the exact count. Um, if the if the um, optimization is actually working, we'll see less amount of documents, right? That means we evaluated less document and we skip more. Um, the other issue that we could see is that there there could be outliers that make you visit way more documents that you would in the case where like where every every uh, the contribution of the term of every doc is about always the same, right? Close to the max. Um, remember, I keep talking about the maximum contribution. So if for some reason, one of the terms has uh, contributes to one of the documents much more than it does to the rest. Um, let's say, for example, in, in the previous example, if there was one document where the term da would have produced uh, a score of 10, then the maximum the maximum uh, impact for the term the the would have been ten, which would have made us visit almost every document in the index, causing lots of false positives. That means that we have to evaluate a lot of documents that we actually won't care about, won't make it to the top end, uh, and will make uh, that will make the um, that would make this algorithm make maybe be even slower 
than a regular exhaustive uh, algorithm that visits every document, right? So that's what Block Max One tries to address the outliers problem. So Block, ma block Max One builds on top of One. Uh, it, it mitigates the um, the the outliers problem by providing by having in addition to the global maximum per term, it will have a maximum impact per block, and it will store those in a separate data structure. So going back to the previous example, but now looking a little bit different because um, now each of those bits is a block of documents, not just one document. It contains uh, many documents. Um, in addition to having the global maximum uh, that a term can have on a document, which is the same we had before, now we can also get the the maximum per per each of those blocks. The algorithm is is very similar, actually. Um, it will start by looking at the pivot in the same way we did before with one, uh, looking at the global maximums, and then what we found there is actually um, a pivot candidate. And once we found the pivot candidate, we need to actually go and evaluate if uh, the, the the local block, uh, the local maximum, to see if the candidate is a real um, is a real pivot or not. And the good thing is that um, we can use this advanced shallow method. Um, the reason what this advanced shallow is doing is positioning the the cursor, but really not not really decompressing and extracting the the, the posting list for that block. Instead, it will use the data structure that the block max one um, has with with can give us the local maximum impact for for that particular block for that term in that block. And once we have that information, we we can evaluate if the pivot we we found is actually a real pivot or if it's if it's if it doesn't make it to be a real pivot. And um, so let's say, for example, that we had a threshold of one. So we found, so we said, okay, then brown, it crosses the threshold and we found this pivot in block two. And now we evaluated the local maximum for, for those blocks. And we've, we, we saw that actually for that particular block, the maximum uh, contribution that a term in brown could have to, the, to a document is 0 0.3. So uh, if, we, if we add uh, 0 0.3 from the term the and 0 0.3 of the term brown, we actually don't cross the threshold which means this pivot is not a real pivot and we don't need to evaluate this document. Uh, what is even better is that we know that we don't care about any document that's in this, in this same um, set of, in this same set of blocks, right? Because every document that is uh, in the block B3 of the term da and that is on the, ter on the block B2 of the term brown is going to have the same maximum. Um, so we can advance not only to the next document, but we could actually advance until we uh, we we leave the the current set of blocks, or we reach um, a doc, or we reach the in this case the position of the term fox, which is uh, much farther uh, forward. Let's say in this case we just we can just skip out of uh, B two of the term brown. So. That is uh, what the algorithm proposes. So let's go to how it is implemented in Lucene. Um, Lucene pretty much follows uh, the algorithms in the original papers, maybe with one big difference. Lucene allows you to change the similarity per request. So if we want to keep doing that, we can't just store the maximum contribution of a term in, in a document because that depends on, on the query, on the similarity used in the request or in the arguments used for that similarity. Uh, Lucene does require that similarities have uh, these characteristics. The score can't decrease as the term frequency increases and the score can't decrease as the norm decreases. So that means that if you have a pair of frequency and norm, it is always more competitive than frequency minus one and norm and or um, frequency and norm plus one. Uh, Lucene does not set any re re requirements about the relation between the term frequency and the norm. So, um, so what we, what Lucene will do is that it will store all, all the competitive pairs. 
So not only the maximum impact, but it will store all the competitive pairs of uh, norms and, uh, and term frequencies. Um, this can cause uh, an increase in the index. I, I believe Adrian Grant did, uh, did some experiments on this. And in his experiments, he showed, uh, if, if I remember correctly, uh, an increase of 1.5%. Uh, but really, that is very much data dependent. It, it depends a lot of uh, what kind of data uh, what kind of how many competitive pairs a uh, thing will have to store, but yeah, essentially it produces it produces a larger index. Um, so yeah, Lucene essentially changed the API to um, to do so 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 that whenever you do a search, in addition to specify how many documents you want back, you have to say how many documents you want Lucene to count accurately. Which uh, if you don't care at all about the number that doc, the hit count you can just set it to to the same value of documents you are requesting you request you could request for 10 and say maximum um i only care about the top 10 uh, about the hit count up to 10. you or if you really if you want to opt out of this uh, of uh, of this algorithm you could say i want all documents to be counted accurately um, I think so by default, it will count accurately to uh, 1,000. You can do something in the middle. You could say, I want accurate count until 10,000, and then I'll have my UI put a plus or something if, if there's more. You still get a uh, count back, but it's an approximation. And um, and then Lucene will do the, will use uh, block max one um, if if the query allows it. Um, as you can see, the performance improvements in Lucene was actually pretty amazing. These are uh, Mike McCandless nightly benchmarks that I guess many of you are familiar with. But if you aren't, go take a look. Uh, down there is the is the link. Um, and this is this is throughput. So high is so higher is better. And this is just one of the types of queries that the nightly benchmark ran. Uh, this is uh, an OR query with two terms uh, with high frequency, but um, but. There are there are a lot of uh, of tests of different queries, and most of them showed a lot of perform a big performance improvement uh, when this change was introduced in Lucene. So, what about Apache Solar? So Lucene has this feature available since Lucene eight. Uh, however, it has not it was not available in Solar until eight point six. Um, you do uh, you. You need an index built with Apache with Apache Solar eight plus to be able to use this. Remember that um, Solar will be able to read indices that were created with uh, with Solar seven with one major version behind. Um, but if you do that in this case, those indices would not have the necessary information. So you need an index that has been built with Solar eight, and um, and similar to Lucene. Uh, when you're doing a query, you can specify the mean exact count parameter. Uh, this parameter tells Solar that you want to count hits accurately until this value. And after that value, you don't care about the hit count, uh, just uh, return an approximation. Um, Solar will use one, uh, block max one, as long as it can be used, depending on the query and depending on the feature sets that you are requesting from Solar. For example, if you are uh, asking for facets, facets will require the full matching document set, so it will uh, disable this optimization. Or if you are using external signals for for sorting, like sorting by functions or or sorting by different payloads, uh, you will not so not be able to use this optimization. The same applies for distributed queries in Solar. It's really not that different. Um, the only thing is that uh, the mean exact count is going to be per shard. So when you it will count accurately, uh, each shard will count accurately until mean exact count, which is more than um, more than you are requesting. And, and if you are using distributed queries, uh, like multi-shard collections, then you definitely want to have at least Solar 8.8.1, which, uh, which had it. So there was a bug that was disabled this optimization that uh, Naoto uh, Minami fixed. So you want to have uh, 8.8.1 at least. So I've run some performance tests in Solar using block max one. Um, this test uses a similar data set and query set that, than Mike McCandle's uh, nightly benchmarks, Wikipedia and the same types of queries. 
Uh, this graph shows that uh, the absolute difference between uh, using and not using a uh, mean exact count parameter. As you can see, some of the queries did a little bit better, some did a little bit worse, and some did uh, much better. And here is the same data, but uh, represented as a percentage of the query time. And you can see some are actually way faster. As I said, um, one of the drawbacks of these features is that you can't use external signals for scoring anymore. Um, and if you want to have this algorithm work, right? Um, there's this feature called feature fields in Lucene and rank fields in Solar, which is not exactly the same. Uh, it doesn't give you all the flexibility that uh, using doc values, using a doc values hit field has, but it does give you some of, uh, some of that back. And the way it works is that it will encode external signals as frequencies in the index. So let's say you have a page rank feature and you want to use uh, to use that to influence the score of documents. If you are using Lucene, then you would create what's called a feature field. If you're using Solar, then you can create the rank field. Lucene is going to store those values as term frequencies in the index. So uh, with some limitation, you can use those signals and, and because they're stored as term frequencies, you still can, you still can still use uh, block max one. Um, and then when you do a query, you have to do a query on, on such field and specify um, which function you want to use on, on that field, which can be um, log, saturation, or sigmoid, and which with a, with a couple of parameters. Um, another thing that you can still do is use query re-ranking. Uh, Solar has this feature called re-ranking where you can tell it to rank document using some query, uh, but then rank the top N of those using another query. So you could do the first phase using something that doesn't include external signals, and then do the second phase uh, with external signals. Uh, and since this was introduced in Lucene, uh, I think almost two years ago, um, there has been a lot of other optimizations coming um, um, at, the, um, at the Lucene level where um, things like um, you can get some, some optimizations also in when you're sorting by a field value. Um, and all those things, all those optimizations are still used under the same API. So what's nice about it is that um, you get them for free in Lucene. And also, if you're using Solar, you will get most of those also for free, just uh, because using we use the same API. So that was my talk. Uh, these are some of the references. Um, if you're interested, one where the one paper and the Blockmax one paper are, and then you will see there some of the main um, Jira issues where um, where this is implemented or discussed. There are much more, but I think many of them are linked. Uh, but these are the these are the main ones. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Damas. So uh, we are getting a few questions. Um, the first one is, in which case uh, can the BMW optimization not be used by Lucene? So it depends. Um, it depends on, on the query type that's being executed. Like, for example, if you're doing a query, I mean, and things may, may have changed in the, in the recent past, but for example, if you're doing a query where, you, where you're doing a phrase query with a slop, um, this optimization would, would not be used. It, it depends on the query. And actually, it's, actually, it's very difficult to, to know which, which queries will be using it and which queries will not. And that's one of the reasons that that, that bug was uh, was reported in eight point eight point uh, in eight point eight, where um, it's it's not very easy to tell if the optimization was used or or not. The second question is, uh, how does uh, block max band work with uh, with pagination? It um, so. Essentially, um, if you're doing the start plus rows in Solar, essentially, as you know, you're requesting more and more documents, right? So it will count accurately and up to the mean exact count, which may include um, 
multiple pages. Make sense? Um, so let's say you requested mean exact count of 1,000, and then, um, but then you're doing a query where you're requesting the document from the 1,002 until the 1,010. Essentially, you, what you will be counting is the exact count until 1,010. Okay. Um, so the next question from Sayanti is, how does it work with grouping or collapsing? Yeah, this is some of the features that Solar has that may disable the optimization. I I believe um, for grouping, it will not be used in Solar, yeah. Okay, uh, Dan has a question. Many queries include facet requests of exact counts. Uh, would it be recommended to split faceting and top end with the BMW into two step queries from the UI? I mean, maybe uh, it, it depends on, I mean, I would test, I would say test it and see. That is kind of um, a tough one, right? Because essentially you're duplicating the amount of queries that you have. Um, uh, you're duplicating the amount of query that you're doing on the index, so that could actually have an impact. Um, so it's 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 very difficult to to respond that question. Um, it's tested, uh, maybe. Um, sorry, I don't have a better answer. Like it depends. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Adrian has a question. Have you considered enabling BMW by default uh, when it's applicable instead of making it an opt-in? Uh, there is a little bit of discussion in the main JIRA issue. Uh, thanks, thanks, Evian, and thanks for actually implementing much of this. Um, there's actually uh, some discussion in the main JIRA issue. Um, so, yes, it could be done. It could be set as a, as a default option. Um, the truth is that it's just a configuration change right now because if you if you want to apply it, you can just put one line to the to the request handler configuration in Solar Config, and you would get it. Um, I uh, what I originally thought we could do was um, have a global configuration in Solar Config where we say uh, for everything the 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 default mean exact count is whatever value we have here, and maybe set that to a lower value because right now it's max integer essentially disabling the optimization. Um, so yes, it was discussed. I think nobody like said, I don't want this. But at the same time, um, people didn't seem very happy. But yeah, um, I mean, it, it's an option. It's an option. We could we could have something uh, enabling it by default. But at the same time, um, Solar has uh, the current set of configuration options that you have in Solar would allow you to set it pretty easily without um, requiring changes to your application. But yeah, like the problem is that, the problem is that uh, I think it, where it is coming is, is that this kind of ends up being like an obscure feature that um, people does not uh, know much about. Maybe one of the main reasons I wanted to do this talk is that I noticed that many people didn't know this feature existed. So I was like, this is kind of something that you really want to test. And um, so, yeah, I, I understand Adrian's question. OK, and we have a question from Feeb. We have two more minutes, and uh, the questions are coming in. So the question is, is it possible to have approximate faceting with BMW? So I, so let's say you have term faceting. Um, I would say that. You, as you know, term faceting has different methods. I think FC is one that goes and counts uh, doc values. And then there's the facet enum option. Uh, I think facet enum would be would be easy to implement uh, if we need to, or facet queries with with WAND, with Blockmax WAND. Uh, I think for, for the regular faceting, I don't think it applies directly, um, but I would have to see, like maybe someone has an idea. Yeah, you missed the last talk. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, I couldn't see. <laughs> I didn't see okay. The the last question uh, that we can take uh, right now is, what use cases BMW best fit for 
Like what are the best use cases you want to use this? Yeah, good question. Um, so I would say, uh, it's a good question with a very difficult answer, I think, because um, I could say text, text, regular text search queries, um, but many, if you have a very big use case, um, maybe you're using a lot of external signals already, which makes it complicated, or you're using some um, very complicated, very complicated queries. Like uh, I've seen cases where I wanted to apply this, but it was they were using already um, like a lot of sloppy queries, sloppy phrase queries, or um, other features that essentially would disable this optimization. So the best use case is um, yeah, text queries with um, where um, no external signals are currently being used or when you where you can do a multi-phase uh, re-ranking query great we're out of time but i'm guessing Thomas is going to be hanging around uh the conference so feel free to ping him there's a slack channel as well where everyone's available there's also the chat so uh, feel free to use whatever medium everyone's comfortable with uh and thank you all for being here and thank you Thomas, for doing this Thank you. Bye. Thank you.